Hello, Teuton Talk listeners. It is June the 4th, 2019, and it's a beautiful day here in St. Catharines, Ontario. Actually, it's not. It's overcast, but we'll pretend it's beautiful. I'm here with artist and teacher Lori Damon Bowes. Hi, Lori. How's it going today? Very good. Thank you, Anthony. I think it's nice out. I like the cooler weather. Yeah, well, I was, I was just down in Mexico, and the summer's shining every day. It's kind of like eternal sunshine down there, so you get used to it, but I'm getting used to the overcast weather here. Yeah, it was nice. Last night I was watching some kids play some softball and it was beautiful. Just enough breeze to keep all the sweat from getting in everybody's face. That's, that's awesome. And you uh, created their logo? Yeah, I was teaching for the DSBN after school programs years ago. And the director of that program, David Hillhouse, was starting up a softball team. And he asked me if I'd be interested in creating their logo. I said, yeah, I'll do it if I can call them the Mastodons. He said, why? Why Mastodons? And I said, well... There's a farmer out in Waynefleet who dug up a mastodon skeleton in his farm. And that skeleton's now on display at the ROM. And once I told him that, he says, yeah, we have to call them the mastodons. So it was fun seeing all of these kids, all these little tiny kids in little red outfits and medium-sized kids in their blues and their greens and the golds for the coaches and all of that wearing this mastodon on their bodies, like as a jersey or as a hat. That's awesome. It's cool. So now I've seen some of your work. Um, you've done the chalkboards at the Mansion House, and they're quite eclectic. Would that be the right term to use? Yeah, I'll go with eclectic. You know, there, there's some pretty realistic stuff there and some cartoony stuff. But because the Mansion House has been there since 1806, I figure I could go with a time travel theme and bring in stuff from all over time, like the old ship that's up there or the dinosaurs. Or there are pictures of mastodons up there, too, that I think are just kind of neat. But I've also gone deep into the future, too, with uh, some Star Trek and some Star Wars and uh, maybe a little bit of Rick and Morty if you're looking closely. Wow, very cool. So how long have you been doing this for? Um, restaurant, chalkboards, and signs, maybe since I was 10, so back to 1980. Can you remember the first one that you did? I remember the first one I did for a restaurant would have been for Butterballs down in the Jordan Valley. My grandma took me down to do a poster for their famous Fish Fridays. So I drew a picture of a mermaid eating fish and chips, and I got a dinner out of it. Nice, nice. So where else do you do this? Do you do it all around the city of St. Catharines? Um, yesterday I was talking to an old high school, not high school, a uh, university buddy, Jonathan Sobel, and he does some restaurant stuff when he's not doing movie direction. So we're going to do some pub design for a place up in Ottawa. So we're just doing that this month. I've done a place for him in Niagara-on-the-Lake. It's uh, a lobster place. Uh, Tide and Vine, I think it is. Okay. And, and so you also teach. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. Uh, when I was 17, in high school, the kid in front of me in my math class turned around and said, hey, I got a job working at a sub shop. Can you take over my pottery class for me? So I started teaching pottery when I was 17 back in 1986 or seven. And I've been teaching ever since. Um, went to teacher's college in 95. Um, ended up doing mad science for classes for a good 10 years. But I taught my own art classes all over the city up to Niagara on the Lake. St. Catharines doing workshops. Rodman Hall included. Wow, that's, that's great. And in terms of teaching, you told me earlier before we started the podcast that if you can te- if you can uh, draw a human or draw a person, then you can basically draw everything or anything. Is that true? I think so. That's why I figure if we can get people drawing each other and paying attention to each other, then everything else is going to seem easy. But we will work on a lot of the basic stuff, and I'm going to make it as easy as possible for the kids by teaching them all the basics, if it's drawing that we're focusing on in a class like that. Because with people, everyone pays attention to so many of the details when they're in each other's company. Although it's easy enough for me to forget someone's name after teaching for 30 years. Sometimes yeah. it just washes right through me. Yeah. So what do you draw upon as inspiration for your work? Wow. Uh, lately, I'm focusing on action figures because when I was teaching the kids how to draw, I used to bring in like statuettes and stuff like that, like a little Greek bust of uh, Artemis maybe. But the kids really responded to my Star Wars action figures. So I'd bring in a couple of Star Wars action figures, and I noticed that they would take a Boba Fett, like a little tiny one, and prefer to draw him, even if he had more detail than the 
great big oversized Boba Fett toy. Because in kid logic, the smaller figures are easier. So I've always got some action figures in my pockets now because they were always just fun to draw. And I would take pictures of them as an inventory before every class started just to make sure I got all of the action figures back. So that's what you're going to see on my Instagram now because it's still fun to take pictures of action figures. And when you go traveling, there's nothing like holding up a little tiny, you know, skateboarder action figure in front of whatever you're going to be uh, photographing. Instead of just you in front of the Eiffel Tower, you've got your action figure in front of the Eiffel Tower. That's fun. Sounds very effective. And so are you from St. Catharines originally? I was born in St. Catharines, raised in Manitoba. So I can actually say I took a horse to school. But we got back in 1980, so I've been here probably as long as I can remember. And what do you think of what's going on here in St. Catharines now? St. Catharines is a growing city, always has been. Uh, I like to see what's going on with the arts. I spent a number of years on the board of directors at the Niagara Artist Company. So we did what we could to foster the arts as a community. We didn't have uh, arts council at the time. That came later with Elizabeth Chitty. So we ended up fostering a lot of other groups at the time, uh, like the Performing Arts Niagara, stuff like that back in the day. And now when I see other people picking up the slack that the NAC didn't have to cover, yeah, this is getting a little mangled. There's just so much going on now. With the Performing Arts Center across the street from where we are now, that's an amazing venue for like the films. The NAC used to show really wild films. That was one of the first things that got me interested in the NAC across the street on the other side. And now to see things on the big screen just blows my mind. I love that. That's great. And In the Soil is coming up. Are you involved with that at all? I, I don't know yet this year. Often Deanna will invite me to do a kids workshop. The first year that they did In the Soil, I made seed bombs. Okay. I picked up a book on gorilla art making at Mixed Media in Hamilton at the little bookshop there. And one of the kids activities they had in there was making seed bombs. And I thought, well, that's perfect for In the Soil. You know, the kids get to get their hands dirty by mixing up some clay, some mud, and some flower seeds. Nice. But I haven't been asked yet this year, and we'll see. Okay, great. And um, in terms of what the future holds for you, what are you uh, looking at doing? Are you looking at getting back into some teaching, or are you going to focus primarily on your artwork? I haven't got rid of a lot of my teaching materials. I do go through the culling where you have to get the books out of there. Like, I've got probably 12 bookcases and a lot of those are going to be teaching materials. I can drop a, drop a hat and teach kids how to make a chess set. We do storyboards, um, video classes. You know, it's just something I could do. Just last year I was asked to teach a kid's pottery class for a literary workshop at the Scotia Center from one of my old mad science colleagues. So if they ask, I'm ready, but, you know, it's got to fit into my schedule. Nice. And are, are there any other views, opinions, expressions you'd like to make today? Oh, I don't have any cowabunga dudes at the drop of a hat. No, but keep paying attention, kids. The world's a beautiful place. Excellent. And how can people get in touch with you? How can they find your art? I'm easiest to find on Instagram, I guess, with Elbows Arts, E-L-B-O-W-S-A-R-T-S, where you get to see a lot of my action figure photography. Okay, great. Well, here we are at Matai Cafe. Thank you so much, Lori. It's really great meeting you. Thanks, Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Okay, take care. Bye for now.